I had no idea that LEGO have actually released a LEGO speeder every decade since 2000. I guess they're missing out on the 90s, but they only had one year that they were producing LEGO Star Wars sets. Anyway, before we get into looking at the three sets I have for today's review, I'd just like to make a special members announcement. In fact, you might have just seen it behind me. We have a brand new members mascot, which is 125 times bigger than the regular minifigure. Just for scout, I'll bring in Captain Antilles here, and you can see it is five times the width, five times the height of a regular minifigure, and also five times the depth, which is where we get the number 125. And that is a close approximation. I haven't exactly measured this out, but it is fully articulated like a Lego skeleton would be. It's a nice squeaking sound when you pull the head off really fast. The arms move, the legs do too. So if you do want to become a member and join our other previous members on Master Moldy's member board, then this skeleton will inaugurate you and you will also get, of course, as with everyone, a printed towel. And I'm also going to be giving printed towels to anyone who drops a member's super chat style thing here on YouTube as well. So even if you don't want to become a member, if you want to donate one off to support the work here on the videos, especially with these review videos, it would be much, much appreciated because Lego is very expensive. You will also get your name on a 3D printed towel, which honestly is pretty cool. But the first Rebel Speeder we will be looking at today comes all the way from 2008. And I'm sure already you know what I mean. I'm going to spend no more time announcing it. It is Rebel Scout Speeder, simply set 7668 before the 75s, which I always like going back and reviewing these older sets. This is a sticker all the way from 2008, but you already know that if you've seen my Brick Link video. The set retailed for 979, a very odd price, but comes with four Rebel Scout minifigures, which are the old fashioned style without the pupils. So Lego didn't always make pupils. And I think that might be why I like the newer minifigures. If I grab one of the new Rebel minifigures, you can see not much has changed over the last decade and a half. The big thing being the pupils on the face, the wrinkles as well. And of course, that torso design, which now does continue onto the back, unlike the older style of minifigure. It's a shame the legs aren't any different. The helmet definitely didn't need any sort of upgrades, but dual molded legs with the black boots would definitely be welcome, much like my upgrade to Captain Antilles here. I'm definitely gonna need to pick them up. But the great thing about this set is the fact that it included four rebels in the one battle pack. This is no doubt about it, a battle pack meant purely for army building, though the turret on the top is a nice addition. In fact, sticking with the turret, I want you to pay very close attention to the helmet of the trooper in the back of the speeder there, because when I pop out the turret, no matter how far forward I want to hold it, the helmet doesn't pop off, and that will be important for later. But as far as the playability of this speeder, it's really cool. You've got the guns which do attach to the side. You can reenact scenes and make them look like turrets, shooting in pretty much every direction. You can even flip them around so they can cover their own back, which is an amazing play feature. You've got the cannon on top, which has this little lever to control on the side. And overall for 2008, is a really cool set. And if you did want any of these older style minifigures, stay tuned for tomorrow's video, where I'll tell you how you can get your hands on a few of these minifigures. Jumping forward to 2010, you're probably all curious what Rebel Speeder this is, and this is the Hoth Rebel Cannon Sled. Though the set it came in was a battle pack titled simply Rebel Trooper Battle Pack. We're not getting any of our typical Rebel Fleet Troopers. This is set on half and actually comes with Zev Seneska, who I couldn't find the helmet of, so I have used the version from the advent calendar the following year in 2011. By the way, we will be weighing these sets up and seeing how worth the price they are based on the weight of Lego you get in the set. But much like the first one where the cannon pops off, you can pop off the turret at the back. And this is because this was a modification made to the turret. This 
cannon sled as it's known in universe. By the way, the Rebel Speeder is not known in Star Wars universe. This is something purely created for LEGO to combat the dropship, which was introduced for Force Unleashed, technically making its debut in a LEGO set, but we'll get into that one next week. The cannon sled is actually seen in Hoth in Empire Strikes Back, or on Hoth rather, and I think the first time it's given the name Cannon Sled is actually in the 40th anniversary book from a certain point of view, which I absolutely love them books and would love to see something similar for the prequels. We get three very different minifigures in this set. The first one being this half officer who has an awesome moustache, by the way, and no leg printing on these. These aren't as good looking as the newer Hoff minifigures we've got. But this officer is leading to regular rebel troopers. And what's interesting is they both have a very similar design on the torso, but they're also so very different from each other. You'd expect just a belt and that little key card to be added on a similar torso, but they've completely redesigned them, which is really cool from Lego. And again, you get a pilot, which should have a printed helmet with a few gray bits, but not too different from any of the other X-Wing pilots. In fact, I'm pretty sure Zev here was included in another Hoff set at the time that could have even released the same year. So I'll whack that up on screen. It's very interesting that they didn't go with a different X-Wing pilot, but I guess if they already had one, they might as well use it for both sets. In terms of play features, this one is a bit more complex because we have some flick fire missiles on the side, which were in every set at the time. And it really brings me back to my childhood playing with some of these sets. There is also a snot brick on the back to store the pilot's weapon and one the other side with some sort of red blinking light. They might want to check that out, which probably ends up controlling the speeder. It, you can place it so that it looks like the minifigure is controlling the turret on top. And there's a little storage section just in the front of the speed out where you can perhaps store the blaster or store something else that they're perhaps transporting across the planet of Hoth. But this year we got a brand new Rebel Speeder which returns to the Fleet Rebel Troopers, which they're called the Rebel Fleet Troopers because they're the ones we see on these ships, not necessarily on different planets and other places like you saw on Hoth, they have a brand new outfit. And this is my mock-up of the set, not the official one. Though it turns out I've built it pretty close to the official model, so it works for this video. For the first time ever in a LEGO set, we are seeing different Rebel Fleet Troopers in the same set. First off, we've got the regular one that we're all used to seeing, so perhaps this is best to act as the comparison for the other two, because last year when we got the Yavin Ceremony set, which isn't a half bad set. We got a brand new face as the Rebel crew and they've reused the same head here. This is a sticker. I don't own that set, but it's nice to see them reuse the head from last year as a Rebel, technically making this an exclusive minifigure, even though all the parts have existed with others. Also earlier this year, we saw Captain Antilles making his debut in the Tantive Hallway Playrama and we're getting that headpiece again for a rebel trooper, which is really nice to see because there's no reason the head should be exclusive to that minifigure or to that set. And Lego have finally cracked down on giving us exclusive heads for all the different stormtroopers, which we'll get onto again, like I said, next week. So it's nice to be seeing the same treatment for our rebel heroes and getting not one, not two, but three unique faces in this set. But let's get back to the set now, because very similar to the very first model we looked at from 2008, this does have that play feature of removing the turret from the back, only this time it's a little bit more problematic. You see, initially, when we were to pop this off, it cleared the helmet, no problem. But because of the different way this has been designed, there is no way to pop it off without damaging the helmet. In fact, I've just taken off the whole back of the model. You know, in hours of me playing with this, that has never happened. So let's give it a, another go. We pop off the turret, and even if we try to slide it out backwards, you can see the helmet has moved that little bit up. So it's a little problem. I don't think they need to change the set for it, but there is a very easy fix just by popping off these two pieces 
at the front of the Canon, the 1x4 and the 2x3. You can now place it down and there is absolutely no problem in pulling it up all the way forward without touching the helmet in front. So it's a little shame to see something like that in a Lego set, but as I said, look, that was such a simple fix. It's really nothing to complain about. But now we can pop off the turret and it does stand by itself. It struggles a little bit without that plate. So I guess for the purpose of this comparison, I will have to put it back on. It is a really cool turret, a lot more detailed than the last one. And we've got our two stud shooters on the side. Whether you love them, whether you hate them, it's an awesome play feature nonetheless. And again, I'll be refraining from shooting them this video because I'm still looking for the last ones. Underneath the turret, we've got a little section which I use to store the blaster belonging to the Rebel firing the turret. And there's no set way to put the Rebel around. I do believe the official instructions have the member with the Rebel crew head firing the turret at the troopers. And then we have the Antilles head leading the ship but you can swap them around there really isn't that much of a difference between them you could also fit free blasters if you don't want them holding it whilst they're in the speeder which would be really really clean to have on your display and trying to put the cannon on the back is a little problem with that helmet but you can do it even one-handed just to show how easy it is is I'm a big fan of these translucent elements coming out the back acting as the engines and this is meant to be in black though if you did want to swap it for a translucent element it does look like the ship is firing at perhaps the troopers that come in the same set but again to see the other half of this you'll have to stay till next week. So here we've got our three models of Rebel speeders and I think it's pretty obvious which one's going to come out the most expensive but here on the channel if you aren't aware I hate the price per brick it's an awful metric for trying to find the value of Lego sets not to insult anyone that uses that metric it's fair enough for comparing certain sets with similar piece sizes but if you're comparing a larger set there's going to be a lot more of the littler pieces so what we do here on the channel is compare price per gram the weight of the Lego set because then it doesn't matter if you're getting two one by one studs or a 16 by 16 plate. You are comparing the actual weight of the set, including minifigures, not including the spare parts, because that would throw it off quite a little bit for those larger sets. And seeing how much they're worth compared to each other, which is such a better metric when comparing bigger and smaller Lego sets. And I can confirm the Hofspeeder is the most expensive at 15 pence per gram which puts it between the snub fighter and the ATTE walker the larger being on the cheaper side now the brand new set does have to include the imperial dropship so i guess it's going to be most affected by that out of everything and it comes in a little cheaper 13 pence per gram and i've tried to approximate for the weight of the official set rather than the alternate pieces i've used to build it which means the cheapest out of the three is this rebel speeder but last week we found out that Darth Vader's transformation chamber is the cheapest set I have reviewed on this channel coming in at only 10 pence per gram and the rebel scout speeder isn't too far behind but it does cost 11 pence per gram the same as the resistance a-wing and the 2012 tie fighter so it's not as easy enough to say lego's getting expensive because yes in the two-year jump between these it does seem that it is but in the 14 year jump we're actually getting more lego for our money but i'll leave that to the comments to debate and even though that we now know the older rebel speeder is the best value i still think the new one's definitely my favorite even with the one less rebel crew member it would have been nice to have seen four rebels four troopers but it definitely would have affected that price and would have been paying an extra tenner before we knew it. So I'm happy it isn't far off the same value as the 2008 set. Don't forget to become a member if you do want your name on that tile. Access to all the bonus videos, every instruction to the mocks that I make here on the channel and a bit of extra information on the side. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Check out the others on screen now and may the bricks be with you always.